Hello! Welcome to Stories for Wonderful Children, the podcast where I share the improvised bedtime stories I've told my children over the years. I'm Dan Wendelin, your host and storyteller. In tonight's story, Brave Bear takes on the task of running Flippity Gibbet's second sanctuary, but he could never imagine the challenges that await him. Can you imagine them? Listen and find out. I hope you enjoy the story. Oh, said Flippity Gibbet. Oh, I, uh, I'm so glad that you have agreed to be the new director of the second sanctuary of Brave Bear. And Brave Bear said, well, thank you very much, Flippity Gibbet. I have to tell you, though, I've never run anything before. I'm really not sure whether I'll be able to do it, but I'd like to try. That is very brave of you. We will, uh, we will do very well together, I'm sure. Let me show you at the sanctuary. And so they left the palace and they walked through the jungle. They walked through the jungle for quite some time, about, mm, so almost 40 minutes. They Not walked for quite some time, really and then Flippity Gibbet said, Oh, we are if here. If you walked there, I would fall asleep. <laughs> and if Brave Bear said, there, I would take nap breaks. And Brave Bear I'll said, take, I'll take nap breaks every second. Yeah, me too. And Brave Bear said, We're here. We're where? I thought it was built. I don't see anything. He turned in a full circle, and looked around, and all he saw was jungle all around them, and Flubbidjibbit said, Ah, excellent, that is a very good. And he reached out toward a tree that was nearby, and from one side of the tree, there was sort of an old knot on the trunk, where it looked like maybe a branch had broken off in the past or something, and Flubbidjibbit pressed on that knot with one claw, and there was this faint little humming sound, sort of a hmm. And then a huge section of the jungle in front of them just disappeared. And behind it, you could see a huge sort of pale greenish dome of light. And Brave Bear went, Whoa! And Flippity Chippet said, Oh yes, we have been very hard at work. We have, we have always found that one of the best ways to protect animals from those who might wish to hurt them, besides protecting them with guards and uh, uh, shields, is to make the sanctuary appear that it is not there. Wow, said Brave Bear. So can we just walk through this glowy green stuff? Oh, ah, uh, mm, uh, no, said Flippity-Gibbet. And then he reached out and he pressed the knot again, and the little sort of section of the glowing green stuff, the, the green glow disappeared, and they walked through, and it reappeared behind them. And then Flippity-Gibbet said, Welcome to the sanctuary, the second sanctuary. Brave Bear said, thank you, and he looked around, and there were all sorts of things he had not seen. There were plants that he knew were very rare, that he had read about in books, but that he had never seen. There were birds flying overhead that he had never seen, and animals walking on the ground. And they walked for some time through the sanctuary with Liberty Shippet, showing him things and pointing out different types of animals. They'd have to dodge animals. Animals on the floor. And then they reached an area where there was an enormous, enormous lake. It was so hard, large you could almost not see the other side. And like it, did it went all the way to Scotland? Not quite that big, but still very large. And the glowing green shield uh, went right down the middle of the lake. Like as big as the world? Not that big, no. Oh my gosh, they get a tree trunk. Is this the size that was? It was so big that you couldn't see the other side. 
It was just a very large lake. It wasn't an ocean or even a sea. It was just a lake. But the glowing green shield went right down the middle of it and flipped it and it said, On uh, this side of the shield are animals that need uh, fresh water. And on this side of the shield there are animals that need uh, salty water. And Brave Bear walked to the edge and he could see something that he recognized swimming in the salty water. It was a manatee. And Brave Bear waded in a little bit and the manatee swam up to him and Brave Bear sort of patted it on the back. And then it swam off very slowly in a sort of stately kind of way, the way manatees do. And then Brave Bear said, well, how do I, uh, how do I run this place? And Flip Digibit said, it is up to you. He said, I have made some of my cat guards available to you, and you must talk to the various animals, and you must every day walk the edge of the shield to make sure that the disguise is working, and to make sure that the shield that keeps things out is working, and uh, other than that, you can do as you like. I will expect a report from you once a uh, oh, once a month. Yes, I will leave you to a walk now, said Bear. And I mean, a brave Bear. I'm sorry. And sad Bear said, brave Bear said, that's okay. Sometimes I still think of myself as sad Bear too. And then Flubberdidge of it turned, and he walked out through the shield. Brave Bear looked around, wondering what it was he needed to do. As he was looking around, he heard a voice. Hey, you up there! He looked down at his feet, and there was the smallest flamingo he had ever seen. Flamingos usually came up about to Brave Bear's waist, but this flamingo only came up about to his knee. And just how tall? Brave Bear is, um, he's a little shorter than me. Like, how about up to your neck? Yeah. That is so tall. Anyway. It's better than Becca. Brave Bear said, yes, how can I help you? And he said, actually, first of all, let me introduce myself. I'm Brave Bear, and I am the director of the Second Sanctuary. Yeah, well, great to meet you, Bob. I'm a pygmy. Pygmy Flamingo. My name is Rupert. Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you, Rupert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the problem. I need something to eat or I'm out of this joint. Well, okay, said Brave Bear. What do you, uh, what do you want to eat? I have very special dietary requirements. I see, said Brave Bear. Well, I'm sure we'll do the best we can. What sort of special dietary requirements do you have? Yeah. Pepperoni pizza. Pepperoni pizza? said Brave Bear. Yeah, you got a problem with that, Bub? No, said Brave Bear. It's just, uh, that's not the sort of food that I thought flamingos ate. I'm not just a flamingo, Bub. If I was just a flamingo, I wouldn't be here in the Second Sanctuary, would I? No, I'm a pygmy flamingo. Rupert, remember? Yeah, said Brave Bear. Um... Let me see what I can do about the pepperoni pizza, okay? Yeah, just don't keep me waiting. I'm getting hungry. If I get hungry, I get grumpy. You don't want to see Rupert grumpy, Mr. Brave Bear. I should say not, said the Brave Bear. He walked away towards the spot where Flippity Chippet had showed him that his office was. He sat down behind his desk and he looked at the phone. He thought about calling a pizza place to deliver pizza. But he knew that the sanctuary had kitchens as part of it. So he tried calling down to the kitchen. There was a button on the phone that said kitchen. So he picked up the receiver and he pressed it. And he waited for a minute while it rang. Ring. Ring. Hello. Yes, said the bear. This is Brave Bear. Um, is this the kitchen? Oh yes, this is the kitchen. What can we make for you, Mr. Brave Bear? Well, yeah. There are these pygmy flamingos, and they want 
pepperoni pizza. They want what? Flamingos don't eat pepperoni pizza? Yes, well, I tried telling him that, but he insists that that's his natural food. I see. Well, we can make a pepperoni pizza. We will have it ready in a few minutes. Where shall we bring it to? Oh, well, I should just bring it to my office, said Bright Bear. He's about to hang up, and he thought, for a second, he said, Could you go ahead and when you make it, cut it up into small slices, big enough for a pygmy flamingo to eat? Oh, of course, we can do that. That is not a problem. Excellent, said Bright Bear. He hung up the phone. How does a flamingo eat if it doesn't have teeth to chomp it up? Well, that's why he asked them to cut it up. Just weird. That is plain just weird. Plain weird. Yeah, double weird when I eat. I mean, eat. a flamingo that wants to eat pizza? Hello? Yes. Yeah. Well, Brave Bear's strange day was just getting started. Soon. A giant goose came up from the kitchen with the pizza in a box. Yoo-hoo, said the goose. Thank you, said Brave Bear. Um, I didn't catch your name. Oh, I'm the cook. I'm the cook. I'm the cooking goose. The cooking goose. Do you have a name? Oh, yes. Goodbye now. But you didn't tell me what... But it was too late. The goose was already gone. What? So... Brave Bear picked up the pizza and walked back out to the area where he remembered seeing the flamingo. He walked along and he almost stepped on the flamingo that was laying down nesting in the grass. Whoa, said Brave Bear, as he just barely avoided stepping on the flamingo. Yeah, Bob. Hey, is that my pepperoni pizza? Uh, yeah, said Brave Bear. And then he told him how he could get more pizza from the goose in the kitchen. Yeah, all right, buddy, thanks. Then Brave Bear put the pizza down and walked away. Weird, weirder, weirdest. Weird, weirdest. So, Brave Bear went back to his office. He looked at his pencils, he looked at his pens, he looked at his pieces of paper, and he wondered what he was supposed to do next. Then he remembered that Flippity Gibbet had told him to walk the edge every day. So he decided that would be a good thing to do. He went out to the edge, and he walked slowly around it. It was a very nice walk, and he enjoyed it. He saw all sorts of animals and plants that he had never seen before. Like hostas? No, he had seen hostas before. They're not rare. What are hostas? Those are the plants we have growing back underneath the magnolia tree. Hmm. And in front, under the dogwood tree, is next to our door. The one that's, that's pine darn and any dragon set. vines? He did not see any dragon vines, no. But, when he was most of the way around, he did notice that there are two animals that seemed to be having a disagreement. It was a white rhinoceros and a Florida panther, and they were arguing over a particular piece of grass. The panther was saying, that's where I want to lay down. Now you go away. And the white rhinoceros was like, No, I want to eat that grass. You need to move along, pipsqueak. And Brave Bear walked right up to him and said, Hello, I'm Brave Bear. I'm the director here. May I help you? And the Florida panther said, This rhinoceros is trying to disturb my nap. And the rhinoceros said, This little kitty is trying to keep me from eating. Brave Bear said, oh, I see. To the panther, he said, you know, I know of a particularly soft spot where you can take a nap. And he told him about it. And he said to the rhino, and you know, this grass is good, but there's some particularly succulent grass over next to the bamboo grove. And the rhinoceros said, really? Very well. And it went stomping off in that direction. And the panther went to go find the more comfy place to sleep. And then Brave Bear finished walking the rest of the way around and went back to his office. He discovered that next to his office there was a bedroom with a bed that was just the right size for him. 
and all his coloring books and crayons from home. And so, as the sun set on his first day as director of the sanctuary, he sat down to do one of his favorite things, and he thought about coloring. But, as he sat down to it, he found that he was more inspired to draw instead of color. And so he drew some pictures of all the beautiful animals that he had seen that day. Thanks for listening to Stories for Wonderful Children. I created today's story, but heckling and clever commentary were supplied by my children. The theme music was created by Brandon Thompson, and the logo was designed by Silas Wendelin. If you know someone who might enjoy the stories, please tell them about the show. Our website is storiesforwonderfulchildren.com, and preview snippets are posted to most social media. I'm Dan Wendelin reminding you to tell someone you love a story.